Well, the big transition is getting rid of all the old guys and taking all of our young guys. The, the thing I think that really separated the Reds from the other organization is the way that they scout. The scouting is the backbone in those days especially of any organization. If you've got great scouts, they find good players. But then we were putting together that all the teachingologies and the phraseologies were going to be the exact same words from the major leagues all the way down to the rookie league. And when in education, repetition is important for people in their learning. And if you keep hearing the same terms said over and over and over again, then all of a sudden kids start learning. So we could conceivably send a kid from my team in the rookie league to Sparky in Cincinnati and there was nothing else to learn. The signs were close to even the same exact signs. So when you do the same system two or three years in a row, it becomes second nature in terms of knowing, understanding. But years later, when I'd done some things as far as failure development, I found that some organizations had a major league manager that had his own plan, the triple A guy did his own thing, the double A guy did his own thing, and so on and so forth. And so the continuity of learning was not the same because they were always having to learn what this guy's cutoffs and rundowns and relays are. So I think one of the biggest things is the articulation of information from our major league team. Even when, when he would sign a player, I would get a newly signed player form as a manager. And what I usually did with them is I left, I didn't look at them for two weeks because I wanted to form my own opinions. Now, Larry doesn't know that. But then in two weeks, I'd get on the bus and I'd hand all those play, newly signed player forms to my trainer and I'd say, don't tell me the name, just read me this stuff. And I learned more about our scouts. I learned, like, say, from Tony Rebello, who was one of our greatest scouts. I learned that if he said this guy is a double-A tops player, that sucker was a double-A tops player. But that's when you got great scouts like these guys were. They knew exactly what it took to win, and when they signed somebody, they told you exactly what you were getting. Now, in some cases, people got way better, but in most cases, they were exactly what these guys said they were. And that's why that was a backbone of our organization, was our scouting system. But Greg, I think one of the biggest things, too, is the scouts. We were signing guys that had tools, something to work with. Because I know in developments that if you, I don't care how good you are, if you don't have something to work with, yep. you're not going to be able to. There's a lot of clubs that just sign guys. They don't really have, they yeah. don't have ability. But you know, for me, I never saw, honest to God, I never saw one player that I couldn't say I, that I didn't believe somebody signed him. I never saw one player because they had at least one tool. magnificent standout tool. tool. And here's an example. Larry will attest to this. We signed a player, his name was Jose Laporte, okay, was a, an Olympic sprint champion. With the idea, we knew exactly what we had, and we wanted to say to ourselves, what if we can get this guy to do something because he can fly? He hit 301 and got hit in the back with two ground balls. Oh, he was totally scared to death of a ball coming at him, and he got hit in the back with him running from the ball. So the experiment didn't work, but I know why they signed him. He had one great outstanding tool, he could fly. And there wasn't a kid that I ever had that I wondered, why in the hell did we sign this guy? Because there was a tool there. I always went with the thing, I, I've been around enough, I know, and I never want to have one of the managers, the coach in spring training, or say, who signed this guy? And I never wanted that to come back, and so I always tried to be that I didn't want somebody to say, who signed this guy? We beat Jim Bouton in the 75 championship series, who was trying to make a comeback and wrote his book, Ball Four. Winning pitcher for the M's, John Underwood. John Underwood was the winning pitcher of that game. Moscow went to Portland, won the first game up there, because they were all, it was unbelievable. It was a, a mockery of professional baseball because Frank Peters was the manager and this guy would stop on the Columbia River and they'd get out and swim in the Columbia River. Somebody could have been killed. So one night I'm turning in a lineup card and his mouth's all bloody. He got in a fight with one of his players. <laughs> oh, just, but what they tried to do is do a mockery of us because we were affiliated clubs and they weren't, so they broke every rule you could break. If they were going to sweep us, which they didn't on our 75 team, they get on top of the dugout with brooms and they chant sweep. I mean, it was just a mockery. So I used it in reverse with our kids, the Reds kids, saying, okay, we want to be the professionals, and they look at that, and they know for sure that's not a professional way to approach the game or respect for the game of baseball. So it paid off. They went, hey, we don't want to be like that. Mm -hmm.